Hi guys, it's Victoria Garrick here. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I will be sharing how I became an influencer and started sharing my story online. I'm really excited to kind of explain how I even got into doing this and kind of being where I am today. I feel like unless people have been with me from the beginning, lots of people find me from like different avenues like TikTok or YouTube videos or they saw me speak or they found the podcast. But today I will track it back and just let you know how I even got into all of this in the first place. Today's video is filmed in partnership with Urban Decay who just launched their new global initiative, Online Bullying Hurts IRL. This campaign pledges to bring deeper awareness to the personal toll of online bullying as well as promote digital well-being and it's all in partnership with the Cyber Smile Foundation. All of that is so important. I know from like living my life online and putting everything out there, what can happen when trolls and people comment, make fun of you, all that stuff. And I thought it was a perfect opportunity to kind of share how I even got into this space. So that's what we will dive into right now. So first things first, I never planned to be doing this with my life. If you would have shown me the pictures I posted of my insecurities and the captions I wrote about mental health, I would have been like in disbelief, absolutely shook because I was never someone who wanted people to see the imperfect side of me. So I sort of fell into all of this very naturally. It all sort of started when I was fed up with Instagram. I had just been posting like Photoshop pictures and my feed was so curated and I was trying to like make all my friends and family think that I like was loving college and everything in my life was amazing. But as I was doing that, I also was going through a lot IRL. <laughs> I was dealing with performance anxiety for the first time. I also was battling lots of issues with my body and food. I did not like the way my body was changing. Eventually I developed a binge eating issue and I will link my video for my story on that if you want the tea. And you guys, all these things I'm like skimming over now, I have other videos, podcasts like that deep dive into them, but today I'm just kind of giving you the quick overview of becoming a content creator. So all of that was going on and I was just kind of like having my first existential crisis in life where I was like, I'm miserable, what's the point of all this? My Instagram is fake, all this is stupid. Like I just got fed up with that. And I had this moment with my older brother where he kind of like called me on it. Like he was kind of like, why do you post these things? Like why do you care so much? And we had this deep convo and it really changed things for me and I thought, yeah, why, why do I do this? Like, I didn't even know the answer, but I knew that there was something wrong and I felt this disconnect. And actually studies show that people who portray themselves inauthentically online actually have a decrease in their mental health. So anyways, my brother and I have this deep talk and I'm fed up. It's like, I, I reached my breaking point. I'm like, I'm over it. So the next day I posted this no filter picture on Instagram of my Yaya. I'm Greek, so I call her Yaya. This, like in the mix of my feed, which was, lots of photos that didn't look anything like this, right? I just posted this picture of my grandma was like a 180. And in my mind, I was like, this is what's happening today. I'm celebrating her birthday. She looks beautiful. I love her. She's such an angel in my life. I want to post a picture of her. Why can't I post things that I actually like? You know, I felt like I was always posting things I thought I had to post. So I posted that and I hashtagged it real post. I was just like, YOLO, real post. Like it just felt like a real post. I'd never heard of the word before. I just sort of coined it in the moment. So that was sort of like when my Instagram changed. I didn't have lots of followers at the time. I think maybe like 2000 followers. And then I kind of kept going with this. So I just was like, I'm posting whatever I want. I posted a picture of a quote I liked in a coffee shop. I posted a picture of me laying on a field. Like I just, I post things that were happening and I didn't Photoshop them and I didn't lie about things and I just started to really like be free online. As I'm doing this, I begin to feel kind of empowered. I'm also going to therapy at the same time. I'm on antidepressants for my depression. I'm working through things and I'm like starting to feel less ashamed of what I had gone through and more like, why have I felt like I had to hide this? I hate the way the stigma has made me feel. And this is another long story short, um, which I'll link the video for the full story, but I ended up delivering a TED talk my sophomore year of school, linking a video for how I got the TED talk. <laughs> so anyways, I prepared to deliver this TED talk and it's going to be about student athlete mental health, specifically what I had been experiencing. And I end up confessing in this talk everything that had been going on. And that was the very first time I publicly shared my story. The goal of the TED talk was genuinely I wanted someone who Googled like at night, I'm depressed and I'm an athlete 
to find the video because I remember Googling that when I was struggling and I couldn't find anything. This was like five years ago. So I wanted to put something out there for someone else to feel seen and they wouldn't feel alone. That was my goal was helping that one student athlete. As I start sharing more, I have a journalism teacher who's like, Victoria, I have an online magazine. It's a small publication. Can you write an article for us for Title IX? So I'm like, sure, I take the opportunity. I was studying journalism, so I was like, you know, why not? Also, cap, side note, I said in the beginning, this is not what I imagined myself doing. What I did imagine myself doing was sports journalism and reporting. I thought I'd be like on a field at a football game, like, you know, doing that. But then as I was studying sports journalism and I was experiencing what I was experiencing as an athlete, I was like, whoa, there's a whole other story here I wanna be telling and it's not about the stats and who won and who lost. It's actually about what is going on in these athletes' lives. And so that is like what helped me pivot to like, there's a bigger story here surrounding athletes that's not our performance. So I end up sitting down to write the article and she, she gave me like the theme of Title IX. But when I sat down at the keyboard, I was like, I need to talk about body image issues. That was what I was currently in the thick of was this war with my body as a female athlete. And so I just wrote the article on that. Um, and then I submitted it to her and then she was like, that's okay. So then that article gets published. Like I'm not thinking much of it. It goes viral. I think it had 80,000 Facebook shares. So that sophomore year, I had this article come out I had the TED talk and I had this drastic change to my Instagram. And so as those things were happening, people were like coming to my pages, like, oh my God, you're the girl that gave that TED talk or you're the girl that wrote that article. I relate, I relate, like I feel seen. And I'm thinking, oh my God, this is amazing because this is what I hoped for was like connecting with people and helping them. And I had no idea how many people though. Like, like I said, I, I was like one athlete. I was like, if one person messages me when I'm 40 and was like, oh, I watched that talk and it helped me, that would have been enough. But like thousands of people were messaging me and coming to my page. So then I started to realize, whoa, like this is a really, really important topic. I'm still an athlete. I have so much more I can share. And if me being honest and real is helping these people, I'm happy to keep doing it. During my like junior year in college is when I think I had around like 25,000 followers on Instagram and was really finding my voice and sharing more about like what was going on. And so that's where I was like, okay, well, how do I keep producing content and videos that can help people? So I started my YouTube channel, I think my junior year of college and I blogged until my senior year. And so that was another thing that I started that really helped me reach a lot of people. But then after, and actually it's funny because Christmas break, my senior year, I remember my dad being like, I think I had 35,000 followers on Instagram at this time. My senior year of college, I think it was 35K. I remember my dad being like, okay, like real post is cute, but what's your plan for a job? Like a real career. And I remember thinking like, yeah, like, you know, I'm, well, I just did my internship and I'm figuring it out. Anyways, I get back to school and I'm no longer an athlete. So this is my senior spring. I finished my fourth fall. I'm done with the team. I'm actually able to monetize my name, image, and likeness now. I have another video on the name, image, and likeness. New rule that changed so that you guys can make money if you're student athletes who are doing uh, content creation. So because now I wasn't a student athlete, that rule didn't apply to me and I could make money. And then one day I get a DM from an athlete at Denison. And she says, hi, Victoria, I watched your TED talk. I loved it. Could you come speak here? And I remember reading this DM like, can I go speak there? Like I gave my TED talk two years prior. I remember going to my dad like, can I do this? Like, and she asked me what my rate was. I was like, "What? what's my rate? You know, what's my fee? And you know, my dad and I are sitting there talking like, like we didn't know, you know? So I book my first speaking engagement ever. And then I post about that. And then after I posted that, people saw it and said, oh my God, you spoke at this school. Well, can you speak at my school? I ended up booking out what was like a full tour of multiple um, universities and colleges that first year after graduating college that I looked at it and, you know, I, I sat down with my parents and I was like, this is going to be the equivalent of like a job. It was obviously risky because I mean, now we know what happened in 2020, everything in person was canceled, but I was able to do this that first year out of school, um, no problems. And then the 2020, um, 
travesty hits. I don't want to say the exact words because YouTube will flag this video. The remaining speaking gigs were postponed. Also, I started a podcast. Oh, sorry. I'm kind of forgetting. I'm not forgetting things, but I started a podcast my first few months out of school. So the summer after I graduated, I started a podcast because now I'm trying to grow my channels and to create different kinds of content. So everything gets kind of shut down and speaking was my main source of income. And then I had YouTube and I had, the podcast was not making money. I did not make money off my podcast for the first 55 episodes. So obviously I have a little bit of a, whoa, you know, my plan of how I was gonna make money can't happen anymore. So now I'm thinking I have to pivot and I never really viewed myself as a traditional influencer at the time. At that time, if you asked me what I did for a living, I would say I'm a public speaker um, and a mental health advocate. That was also around the time I founded The Hidden Opponent, the student athlete nonprofit I founded that raises awareness for mental health. So I'm, I'm building that, I've got the podcast. Where was I in my story? Oh yes, so I have to pivot. I have no choice now but to monetize my social media platforms. So I started posting TikToks. I remember I was like four TikToks a day. I mean, I woke up and I churned out four or TikToks a day, just trying to create viral videos, trying to reach people. And I think during that time period, I garnered around or over like 500,000 followers. And then the podcast started taking off. And so I signed with the network and then the podcast started um, becoming a source of income for me. And then because my social platforms were growing, agencies were reaching out to me and I was able to find an agency that I love and work together to integrate sponsored content and advertisements that are really aligned with me. So in a nutshell, that is sort of how everything came to be in terms of this being my career path. Hi guys, it's me. I'm editing right now and realized I didn't really like put a bow on this whole thing, but basically, so now this is what I do full time. I do a mix of it all. So I am public speaking virtually right now, only in public when it's safe. I host my podcast every single Wednesday. You can listen wherever you stream. It's called RealPod. I put out daily content on Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, weekly content on YouTube. Well, I do my best, but I'm not the best on YouTube. I also am the CEO and founder of The Hidden Opponent. So lots that goes on on my daily basis, multiple different revenue streams, lots to juggle. I just hired my first employee, shout out Elise, who has been so helpful. And the two of us really work together to try to just get everything done every single day. I'm so, so lucky and grateful for it. Like I literally wake up and I love that I get to connect and just be real and speak from my heart. And you know, like it started as real post and I believe it is still real post. That said, it is very scary to share your story online and to be honest. It's not like I'm talking about something that is mythical or I'm talking about someone else. Like I am literally pulling up my phone every day and being like, I am anxious. I'm not feeling great. Like I'm insecure in my skin today. That's what's going on. And that's how my platform developed. But at the same time, it's really hard. And the more eyes that come, the more you can be scrutinized. I think it's really important to talk about this side of this world because one, it's so important to raise awareness for online bullying. But two, I want people to be themselves online. I want you to feel comfortable and confident in sharing your story and what's going on with you without fearing that you're going to be picked apart or made fun of. Urban Decay commissioned a study and found that out of a thousand respondents in the United States, 55% of people felt like they could not be themselves online because of the fear of bullying. And 76% of the people who responded that way said they've been bullied online because of their appearance. I actually posted a TikTok video trying to help people embrace their stomach fat. And I was so trolled on that video. I'll show you the TikTok. Hi, so the other day I posted a TikTok video trying to normalize fat, body fat, stomach rolls. And comment after comment just said I was fat, I had fat, I should work out more. One of them said I had more rolls than a bakery. Honestly, that one made me laugh. But here's the thing, if my body type is getting berated like this and attacked like this, what kind of message are we sending women and other young girls? Like how small do I have to be for me to not be told that I need to be smaller? I have really thick skin, so this doesn't bother me, but I'm just posing a question. like. What are we supposed to look like so that you all can say we, we, we're, we're fine, we're not gonna get hate comments? I think it's impossible. Um, I don't think it's reachable. So if you're a girl or a woman, you're watching this video, you don't have to ever get a body type that needs the approval of anyone else but yourself.
Now, unfortunately, online bullying is something that is common. I think you can find it on every single platform. I would love to ask you if you would please comment a heart on this video. If you just comment a heart, Urban Decay will donate $1 up to $150,000 to the Cyber Smile Foundation who is standing up against online bullying. There is a website where you can learn more and I put additional information in the description of this video if you want to check that out. Thank you so much for tuning in today and I know that this was like a ride of everything that happened and that's honestly how it has felt in my life. It's just, I look back like, wow, I can't even believe what happened and how certain doors led to other doors and I'll end it with a thank you. Thank you, literally you right there. Yes, you. Because without you, I mean, I wouldn't be able to be here. Everything that I'm able to do is because of the support of someone like you who watches my video and supports my content and cares about this and relates to it. So thank you so, so much. I had so much fun making this today. It was like a trip down memory lane. Thanks again for watching. I hope you have an amazing rest of your day. I'm gonna go eat because I'm hungry. Maybe take a nap because I'm tired. <laughs> And I'll see you guys in my next video.